Okay, hello everyone. I hope you can hear me without a microphone. So, I'm Razvan, I'm a student, and for the past year and a half I've been quite an active open source contributor, and I managed to use my contributions to get quite a few job offers. Now, naturally, I wondered whether was it me just getting lucky uh, with these job offers, or was it something more systematical that open source contributions really help you out when you're looking for a job. So, instead of me trying to hit my head around, uh, around the walls, trying to figure out the answer, I figured that it would be better to ask the people from all these companies that we have here at the conference. So, we will have a panel discussion with the purpose of demystifying recruitment the, the recruitment process by clearly stating what companies look for, and at the same time, try to figure out how open source contributions can disrupt the standard process of getting a job. Now, here we have from left to right, Pavel from Ex the CTO of Exponia. We have Iji, who is a great software engineer with 12 years of experience in recruitment, work representing Red Hat. We have Jozef, CTO of Kiwi.com, and I guess that's enough. <laughs> and we have Lasse, who is quite different. He's an open source enthusiast turned entrepreneur. Yeah, Lasse is special, right? <laughs> okay, so he's an open source enthusiast turned entrepreneur, and he did a really cool thing. He created a small company that does freelancing, and we'll hear about we'll hear more about it later. So the first question would be, what do you look for in a candidate, and where do you and where do you look for it? So, well, okay, so. Oh, right, you're right. So I would like you to raise your hands if you are currently looking for a job. Is any one of you? Okay, we still have one person. <laughs> That is working for Kiwi and apparently looking for a job. <laughs> That's great. And more importantly, how many of you have successfully used open source contributions to get a job? Like, please raise your hands. Are there any? Okay, that's cool. So now that we're done with the questions for the audience. Yes. Okay, so. As Lasse mentioned, a very important part of this discussion is that it's open. We have a few questions already fetched here, but please make your own questions. Ask them anything you want. Like, I don't know, you, you want a new job? Ask for a raise. Maybe you'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the same for the stream. You can post questions on the Slido. Our questions are already there. So, I guess we can begin. Is it okay, Lasse? Thank you. So, what do you look for in a candidate? And more importantly, where do you, where do you look for it? So, Pavel, please start. Oh, who has the microphone? Does this one work? Uh, yeah, we're... <laughs> All right, so. So, when we are looking for a candidate and, and basically technical skill or coding abilities are just one of the aspects. There are several other aspects so that we understand whether the candidate is the right fit for the job. It's also, you know, what does the candidate value? What are the motivations, aspirations? Where does the candidate want to go? What does he want to learn? Is he able to learn? Does he fit with your existing team? There's so many things that you need to evaluate that uh, we are discussing open source here and I, I kind of moved away from that because culture is, is a thing that's a, of a great interest to me. Uh, you know, contributing to open source is a great way to get discovered, but it doesn't itself lend you the job. For that, you need to, you know, check all the other boxes. 
Okay, thank you. Now, Joseph? Here to share. Okay, easy. Okay, that's gonna be fun. Okay, I was relying on the fact that some of you could shout to the audience and all just use this stream microphone. You need it for the stream. Right. All right. Uh, can you can you guys hear me? Okay. Um, so yeah, um, I would say that we're really trying to get um, as good picture about the person um, uh, as possible when uh, either the person applies, which is one scenario. Um, so those are the people who are really um, actively interested in a job. But uh, I would say the other scenario, which is very relevant uh, for this um, uh, audience, is really people who are going to conferences, right? Because those are the people who are investing their free time and energy into going somewhere and uh, learn some some stuff, which uh, you know, for me as a recruiter, is is great great audience uh, to try to target and basically try to convert uh, into somebody interested uh, in the work, uh, you know, uh, for our company. Okay, thank you, Jozef. Okay, cool. So, um, I think I maybe should mention like what kind of company my company actually is. So I'm, I'm not actually hiring people. Um, I'm like a freelancer and I sometimes have contracts and uh, I don't want to do them, right? <laughs> We're all lazy. <laughs> um, in addition, like I ha I'm the, uh, the founder of the Koala Open Source Project, and we have lots and lots of talent there. There's um, students who love to code, and uh, who actually who are usually thrilled by the thought of being able to doing something for an actual client. And so, so what I usually do is I take those people that I know that are really good and really passionate. I, I really look for passion and, and not so much for the technical ability. ability. Um, and I s just offer them like a contract to work with me for, for one client and help them, although they are like students who don't know how to deliver a professional service, offer them to work with me to provide a professional service to some client and essentially shape their way into becoming an own entrepreneur or becoming an own freelancer um, and I think like there, there's this saying hire for attitude and not for skills. I think that's very, very, very much true. Okay. Thank you. So, so apparently you guys are looking a lot at the attitude of the people that you are considering as candidates, right? But yes. Just where can you look at that? Like you mentioned GitHub, you mentioned conferences, right? Is that enough to just figure out that the attitude of a person is enough? Like, do you have anything to comment on that? What are what other ways are there to figure out that the attitude of a person is right for the job? So obviously, um, you can. I think you can really tell best by uh, the face-to-face -face interaction with the person about uh, the attitude and motivation of the person. And really, like the, the other things uh, will give you like pieces uh, pieces of information, right? So, for instance, if the person was already contributing to, to an open source project, um, to maybe some some bigger one, um, and probably you know has maybe like an accepted patch there or you know some something like that. 
So without really needing to talk to the person, I can already make a lot of assumptions, such as you know the person was able to understand what the problem was. Um, he or she was able to understand like how to fix it, and then you know the patch was uh, accepted by the community. So you know that there was probably um, some interaction, which is a good start of the conversation. But then um, it's really about uh, making some connection with the person and trying to understand what the motivations are and whether um, it would work for, for both sides, right? I think it's really about being genuine um, and uh, you know, like showing the person like what kind of uh, environment you are representing, and whether this would be a fit uh, or not, because this is not like a one-way street, right? But it's about um, basically making the decision of, on both parts, on the candidate or you know, person side, whether this kind of environment and these kind of challenges would be the right fit for him or her, and vice versa on the company side. Okay, thank you. Okay, Lassie. Um, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I have, I have two microphones. It's okay. <laughs> um, um, I think that there's uh, some some decent truths to to what you just mentioned and, and what you mentioned before, like uh, use your brain. Um, like at at Koala, like we have this newcomer program, which makes very very easy to make the first contribution. But that, that usually means there are a lot of people that, that don't expect that they are expected to think <laughs> on their own <laughs> and to, to solve a problem. And instead they want to fix an issue and like follow the instructions. This is like the, the university way of thinking. You get a task, you get it solved, you get graded, done. And it's like, Come on, that's that's not helping you in real life, and that's not that's not helping solving the real problems. And um, I think this is as well true for for all those companies that are looking for people, um, especially for freelancers, because you you don't want to sell the service of I implement you your specifications and then I'm done, but you you want to solve a problem of a client. A client has a problem that you need to understand, and maybe the solution that the client has in mind isn't actually the, the real deal. Like, I, I had a client who was, who was like, uh, you're gonna do this, this, and this, and this, and I was like, okay, that, that's gonna cost you like 2.5K, but if, if we just like write those people an email and they give us the data, like, you, you don't have to pay anyone, basically. <laughs> so in, in a lot of cases, there are much simpler solutions. In a lot of cases, there are better solutions. Than, than what the client expects and um, this this way of like use your own brain and don't rely on what other people write there. I think this is really, really important. Okay, thank you. Now, moving on. I think, Jozef, you mentioned talking to friends of friends of friends of friends in order to get good, pe good people to take your jobs. Now, how do these referrals? How does this referral system actually work? How does it affect the job seeking process? Please. Yes, please. <laughs> no. There is a serious theory that stupid people are just stupid people, and smart people are just smart people. We just need to find smart people and they attract their friends. Sometimes we want to be together to make friends. Um, so we don't need to seek for them that in any way it just works itself because this is what people want to create communities and uh, work together and deliver and share, share build stuff. Okay, and how and does find them in the bar, that's uh, what we Okay, that's good to know. But how does this affect the whole recruitment process? Like the, do they still have to end interview or at least prove their skills with the resume or stuff like that? Or uh, GitHub no, account? Really somebody brings it's amazing, so you just give the interview and you trust your people. So uh, there's basically, you skip everything and you just employ it. Okay, so you can get employed right on the spot just like that. Of course, because your friend told us you're amazing. Okay, that is great. Now, how is it? I don't know if that's fine, but yeah. <laughs> okay, so care to share? So I, I would say that it really depends case by case. Sometimes you know, it depends on the, on the referral itself. How well does the person know the, the referring person? Did they ever have chance to work together? Uh, so there's 
lot of aspects that we need to evaluate during the referral itself. Uh, in some cases, we would like to see the referring candidate to actually code. Sometimes we can skip the coding part. Uh, what I would suggest to do at almost all, all the times is definitely the cultural fit. Because even though they were able to work together before, that's why he is referring his friend, uh, it doesn't mean that he will just easily fit into the new team. All right. Niji, got something to add about how referrals work at Red Hat? Yeah, I would say that most of the larger technological companies has, uh, have some kind of like uh, referral program in place. And at Red Hat, we rely on this program quite heavily um, because it's, it's a huge portion of like the percentage of people that we hire. And I would say it's so successful because uh, it makes our life as recruiters much easier um, because the potential candidate already has a lot of information, uh, the informal ones, which you cannot really read uh, on the website or, you know, like you can only learn by interacting with somebody in the company. So it's, it's really easier on our part. Um, uh, I would say that the referrals are getting some kind of VIP treatment as well. Uh, we actually have an SLA, uh, like, you know, uh, larger companies, uh, some processes and stuff like that. So we actually, as a recruiting team, we have SLAs um, uh, when, you know, like when we are supposed to contact the people. And then uh, the whole interviewing process is really much easier because uh, it's much easier for us to explain what the company is about, what the job is about, because they already have this information and much better than, than we'll be able uh, to, to give them uh, straight from somebody who's working on that project. Obviously, we still do the, the interviewing process, like uh, we still check like all, all the bits and pieces that we're supposed to, to really make sure that, you know, the, the person is a good fit, not only technically, but also culturally. Um, but I would say that uh, the referrals are also uh, much faster productive. So, you know, they, they are not really surprised by, by anything when they join the company. So I would say it's a win-win it's for both, like for all sides, like for, for the employees uh, who are referring the people. Uh, for the person who goes through the referral program and also for the company itself. Thank you. Now, moving on to the impact of open source of, on all of this. Can involvement in open source be compared to a referral system? And if so, how can it happen? Like, Jozef, for example, the trust of a community reflected in a person, would that be enough to em employ somebody on the spot? Like, Referral from a friend would be? Oh, such a great message. EG, oh. now, how is it for, from Red Hat's perspective when you are considered one of the, mo if not the most successful open source company out there? Uh, yeah, so really the uh, involvement in open source can, can help a lot. Uh, and it is like really um, uh, a, a good uh, addition to, to the referral program. Because again, from, from the person's perspective, um, when they identify such a such a project that they want to dedicate their free time to, you know, exploring and learning and starting contributing to, um, and you know, like a lot of those projects are actually sponsored, and you know, people people uh, who work at Red Hat uh, are working on on those projects as their daily job, right? So, this is really like uh, it's a no-brainer. It's a connection of like what the person really likes, um, and you know, so far hasn't been paid for. Um, just converting it into a full-time job. So, yeah. I guess that's the place. Okay. Lasse, is it this? Okay. Yeah, actually, actually it's, it's kind of related. Um, uh, so what, like how, how I find people is basically, right, I, I know those people, which is like direct referral. I know them or I know somebody who knows them, but usually they, they work in an open source project that is related 
to me like the open source project leads directly to a direct referral if you are a company that actively maintains some open source projects and then what actually matters li is like which open source project you contribute to because um, if, if you for example want your dream job at one certain company and that certain company maintains an open source project then contributing to that project like seriously contributing um, will probably make it much easier because this will this will get you in touch with the community then you will get to know the people and then you will get a referral and have the open source involvement so I think it's like um, not like you can compare the open source involvement to referral but in this case one leads to the other and they both like add up okay thanks now moving on to the last question how does prior involvement in open source help the candidate adapt to the job? Pavel? Could you? There you go. It feels hard to compare it. Like, if you were active in open source community, you already are aware of certain processes that happen in any software company. It makes it easier to adapt to that. You basically don't even have to adapt. You already follow the same rules uh, that are very similar to open source development. So that that's great. Even if you don't have any prior experience working on distributed teams, for instance, uh, this is where you learn it. So I would say go for it. Definitely do that. And, and this is going to be an advantage for you when you join the team and you don't have so many things to learn. Uh, other, other than that, there's nothing but the, but the practice. Like, keep coding. That will make you a better developer. That will, that will add you opportunity on, on landing new jobs, better jobs, or like you can move in your career, even in the job that you have right now. Like, just code and code. Uh, so that's another reason to, to contribute to open source if you don't know what, uh, what to do with your, uh, or if you don't have your own projects, I would say, just contribute to the existing ones. It's just a practice. Uh, so that, that's for my side. Okay. Niji, want to add something? Yeah, I would say that uh, in our environment, most of our projects are open source. So really like uh, having the exposure to working on an open source project gives you a pretty good idea about like what the actual work, uh, you know, like uh, full-time work would look like. And I would say on the other hand, like, um, if the person doesn't uh, have an uh, open source exposure, um, especially if they're working in an environment where it's like, a, you know, very um, uh, process driven and, uh, you know, like there is a lot of direct guidance and the person is not really able to adopt to the open source way of doing things, um, they'll be struggling. So we've seen that already in the past when, you know, we hired really brilliant people who were coming from like, you know, more structured environment and they weren't just able or willing to adopt to the open source way of doing things. And, you know, unfortunately those people didn't really last. So, you know, again, this was like something that we learned from and that we always try to, or always focus during the interviewing process as well, making sure that the person will be comfortable with doing the things the, the open source way. All right, thank you. Jozef, wants to add something? Or? Okay, well, that's a very good answer. So now moving on to the most appreciated question and probably a very interesting one. What's the most weird thing somebody asked you during an interview, right? Okay, who wants to start? Okay. So whenever I do an interview, I typically try to, to reserve a pool of time so that the candidate can ask me any questions. I typically expect questions about the work environment, conditions, team, uh, his involvement, and stuff like that. Like, I expect an interest. Uh, I had this candidate whose first question in this pool of time was, so how did I do? You definitely don't want to be to be asking this question during an interview. <laughs> All right, Niji. 
I can only remem remember that once a uh, guy asked me at the end of the interview whether it's cool with us that he would be uh, he would bring uh, beer to to work and actually drink during working time. So I, I found that kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Now, last thing, maybe share something not from necessarily your Viper Dev company, but maybe from Google Summer of Code. Yes. So um, I I am regularly reading like. Every since one or two years, I think two years now. I, I am administrating Google Summer of Code for uh, Koala and I have been doing it for GNOME in the past few years. I'm a bit involved in, in that as well this year as well. So I do get to see like lots of applications of students who want to work with as, as an internship kind of thing with open source projects. Um, and I think there was, I, I don't exactly remember it, but there was one guy who, who um, made up a completely non-doable project um, which had absolutely nothing in relation to GNOME. Um, and it was like, spam. <laughs> All right, thank you. So now, questions from the audience. Does anybody want to ask anything to any of the... Okay, so should I start with that? Okay, so now, what's the weirdest thing you asked on an interview? Mm -hmm. Does anybody have an answer to that? One, anybody? Weird questions? Jorge? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can you also take the stream microphone, please? No, that one, that one. Can I use only this one? Uh, so we are asking questions like, uh, I, I know our business development guys are asking, do you steal? Or what animal would like would you like to be? <laughs> Superpowers would you like to have? <laughs> and uh, usually the people we hire, uh, we never hire people that get stuck here, then what, what do they do? <laughs> kind of uh, idiot questions. Uh, there was a cool answer to the superpowers, but I can't rem remember it now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you. Maybe next time. So, so anybody here that has a question? Really? Aren't they posted by me? Yeah, I think we already asked those ones since they are posted by me. Okay, shoot. Go for it. Okay, would you rather like people to contribute to their own open source projects or to open source projects of already established organizations? Is that right? Cool. So, either of those, it doesn't it doesn't really matter. It's about the depth of your involvement. It's always a bit better from my perspective, though. If I see you working on your own projects, because that's a bit harder, because you have to set your own goals and you have to, you know, follow the steps to fulfill it. If you join the existing projects, you're basically kind of walking in footsteps of someone else. So, looking at the, you know, at your code contributed to a different project that's not yours, I would want to see like a really good technical talent, but if you are working on your own project, there are six different aspects I would evaluate. It's ju just not the, the quality of your code. It could be like a fit with your potential user customer or like your your general thinking about the project, right? Right, thank you. 
Yeah, I would say both as well, and it really depends. Like, uh, so if you, if you're starting your own project, um, I I really um, am looking at like whether you know you're just uh, it's it's kind of like hello world in five different languages, or if it's uh, like a bigger project and you are also able to get some other people involved who are actually actively contributing, which I think is really cool. And if it's really working on somebody else's project. Um, then uh, I think it's cool as well. Um, uh, so it's and it's also it's not only about evaluating the the, the you know like the quality of the code, but also the other aspects. So how are you interacting with the other people in the community? What is the style of the communication? And really like get the the holistic picture about you. So I would say both ways are cool. All right. Any other questions? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Okay. Okay. So, what do you do when you find an excellent candidate who asks, however, for too high salary? You just say no. <laughs> okay. There's your question. There's your answer. So, also a question. A question there. <laughs> All right, so thanks a lot for the audience, thanks a lot for the great speakers here, so yeah, a round of applause for them, please. <laughs>